Good afternoon and welcome to Our Lady of Peace. Our opening song as well as the other hymns and responses are found in your worship guide. Please rise for the entrance procession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, we are just beginning this season of Lent, this season of penitence, uh, of prayer, of preparation for the celebration of our Lord's work of redemption through his death and resurrection. We know that he has come to do that to Help us to resist temptation and to forgive us when we have fallen to temptation. So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. We've used this penitential act before, but it's a little different uh, during the season of Lent. It is in your worship aid, just a couple of short responses. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow an understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man out of the clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east and placed there the man whom he had formed. 
Out of the ground, the Lord God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food. With the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord God had made. The serpent asked the woman, did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, it is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, you shall not eat it or even touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like gods who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eyes and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, 
Through one man, sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world. Though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin after the past pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one, the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many. And the gift is not like the result of the one who sinned. For after one sin, there was the judgment that brought condemnation. But the gift, after many transgressions, brought acquittal. For if by the transgression of the one, death came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ? In conclusion, just as through one transgression, condemnation came upon all, so through one righteous act, acquittal and life came to all. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. The tempter approached and said to him, If you are the Son of God, Command that these stones become loaves of bread. He said in reply, It is written, One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, 
and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took him up to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their magnificence. And he said to him, All these I shall give to you, if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. At this Jesus said to him, Get away, Satan, it is written, The Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. When we think about an event or an organization or even a company, we can wonder sometimes what keeps them moving forward? What keeps them focused on improving and adding more services, being better than ever before, so that they don't eventually lose steam uh, and uh, go out of existence, close up shop? And a lot of times when we ask that question, we see organizations or events or companies that really are moving forward and really keeping that momentum, it's because there are uh, a group of people or someone in that organization, maybe the CEO uh, or maybe just the coordinator of an event, that really has a lot of drive, that really has a lot of drive to keep pushing, to keep pushing it, it forward. I'm grateful that actually we have uh, a, a lot of people like that helping us with various events and things here at Our Lady of Peace. And so we see that we need that sort of kind of focus and drive in order to keep things moving forward. That's true for organizations and, and companies and such. But on a deeper level and on a personal level and on a spiritual level, we need something to be the driving force of our lives. And it's a little bit different here. It's still a person, but it's a different person that is that driving force for our lives. The Holy Spirit is the impetus. The Holy Spirit is that driving force. The first reading we have this weekend is about the, the fall of Adam and Eve, the original sin. And because that's the majority of the story, a lot of times that takes all of our attention. But there is that, that point at the beginning of that story where it says that God formed humanity, man and woman, out of the dust of the earth, and he breathed into them the breath of his life. He breathed into their nostrils the breath of life. That breath in the original language, the Hebrew, is the same word for spirit. God was putting his spirit into us, and that Holy Spirit as that impetus and that driving force is what has given us life in the first place, given us life at the creation of the world, but the one that gives us life in general, even now, each of us individually. And it's that same Holy Spirit, that same breath of God, that is the driving force behind the recreation of the world. So the world was created by the Lord God through the breath of his, his mouth, through the Holy Spirit. And then again, we hear about how Adam and Eve turned against the Lord, did not obey him, and uh, we fell. St. Paul describes all of this in that second reading as well. Uh, and the force, the driving force, the impetus behind our recreation was again the Holy Spirit. We see in the gospel today that Jesus overcomes temptation, overcomes the same tricks of that serpent that Adam and Eve fell to. So we see that this is, is that recreation, that redemption, the beginning of the story of of overcoming uh, what happened at the beginning. And it's always been kind of a puzzle, I think, to many, including myself, why it says that the Spirit led Jesus into the desert. In fact, in St. Mark's Gospel, we read from Matthew today, but in St. Mark's Gospel it says the Spirit drove him into the desert. Not like we get in the car, we load up, we go to the desert, but, but, but forced him, kind of pushed him into the desert. But I think in light of this, this reflection on the driving force of our life, 
especially spiritually, but in general, it makes sense that the Spirit was the one to lead Jesus into the desert because the Spirit is that driving force behind not just creation, but redemption, uh, that recreation, that ability to overcome those temptations that once we, we fell to at, in the beginning. And so as we enter into this season of Lent, as we begin the various disciplines and the fasting and all of those sorts of things, if a lot of times I think we're looking for that, that energy or that oomph that's going to, to get us through the season of Lent and to stay faithful to those disciplines, the prayer and the fasting and the almsgiving. A lot of times, too, we're looking for that same kind of, uh, that same kind of energy or that same kind of oomph that will, that will enable us to resist temptation and to be disciples and followers of Jesus. And if we look for that impetus and if we look for that driving force in ourselves, we're not going to find it. We're going to find what Adam and Eve found, which is that we end up falling and stumbling time and again. That driving force for all of those things must come from the Lord God, from the Holy Spirit, because he is the one that created us in the first place, and he is the one that recreates us uh, as we hear in the gospel. And so that driving force, we have to turn to the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit to work in us to enable us to have that energy to keep moving forward through the season of Lent, to keep moving forward as his disciples, uh, and to resist the temptations that we face. And what is that, that driving force like? I think the, the, both of these readings that, and what we've been reflecting on give us a sense of what that is like. The Holy Spirit, as that driving force, despite that, that kind of the being, um, again, a forceful sounding, I guess that's the word itself, but a forceful sounding thing, the Holy Spirit is gentle. The Holy Spirit is gentle. He is that breath of God, just breathing into us, uh, breathing into us God's life. In other words, the Holy Spirit, uh, as that impetus for uh, our lives, is not condemning. He doesn't condemn us. He doesn't criticize us. Uh, he doesn't uh, disparage us. Contrast that with the serpent, who um, it, I think it sounds perhaps a little gentler in our translation maybe than it, than it would have uh, normally, but the serpent is kind of saying to Adam and Eve, don't be dumb, don't be fooled by the Lord. It's a very kind of critical voice in his temptation. Get with it. You know if you eat it, you'll be like God. That's not the way the Spirit speaks to us. The Spirit always speaks in a gentle way and moves us in a gentle way uh, as we seek to follow him. But at the same time, because he is that, that impetus and that driving force, that, that gentle movement of the Spirit is still persistent. It's still persistent and continues to speak to us and continues to nudge us uh, towards what is for our good. Uh, and so maybe you've experienced this. If you've opened yourself up to the Holy Spirit and invited him in, there might be times where there are those repeated nudges. For instance, you might think to yourself, uh, in a moment where you're not sure what to do next in your day, all of a sudden the thought comes, I could go and take some time for prayer. And I know if you're like me, there are plenty of times where I say, well, actually, I got other stuff to do, so I'm gonna, I'll get to that later, but I'm going to do this, this other thing first. And then the nudge comes again. But you could do that later. And it's a very gentle, again, encouraging sort of thing. Uh, it just kind of pushes us in that direction again. We think, okay, well, uh, I suppose I could, uh, I could do a little bit now, but then, then I'm gonna gotta, I could really got to get things done. And we might feel that push again, or later on that day, or maybe the next day, reminding us, drawing us to be those disciples of the Lord Jesus and to, to stay faithful to our disciplines and to resist temptation. This can happen, too, when uh, uh, the Holy Spirit is moving us, driving us uh, to not just be disciples, followers of Jesus, but also to share the good news. Sometimes we might feel the, uh, a sudden, um, sudden in, um, inkling that we should talk to somebody, maybe somebody that we've encountered or someone we just haven't talked to for a while, uh, and it just won't go out of our heads. It's gentle, but it just won't uh, go out of our minds. And that can be the Holy Spirit being that driving force, uh, leading us to, uh, to be disciples, leading us away from temptation, and leading us to fulfill our Lenten practices. In addition to reflecting on the readings this weekend, this weekend is also 
Catholic Services Appeal weekend. Uh, and I think the theme for this year fits very well with the theme of these readings and, and what we've been reflecting on. The theme is, for the love of Christ impels us. For the love of Christ impels us. It's a, it's a verse from 2 Corinthians, St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. And I think it fits very well uh, because we know that the love of Christ, the love of God, is nothing other than the Holy Spirit. And so what it's saying is that the Spirit impels us. It's the Spirit that not only impels us to follow Christ, it's the Spirit that also impels us, drives us uh, to show charity to our brothers and sisters, to uh, do outreach uh, and service of those in need. And that's what the Catholic Services Appeal is really all about. Uh, this year they had a kickoff event for pastors uh, a number of weeks ago to prepare us for the Catholic Services Appeal. It was not something that we've done, at least in recent years. But I learned that there's a lot of good things uh, going on right now at the Catholic Services Appeal Foundation. I've always been supportive of it, but I was, uh, I was really impressed by some of the things that they are working on right now at the foundation. One of the new things is they, uh, they have a president for the foundation now. That might seem kind of like a simple thing, but it's been a board in the past without a president to see to the day-to-day -day running of uh, the operation. And so now they have a president who's been at it for about a year. It's someone actually, I don't know him super well, but he is at least an acquaintance of mine. His name is Tisak Rosales, and he's a, he's a great man. He uh, came from uh, doing advancement for the seminaries, actually, and one of his daughters uh, was a roommate to my sister in college. Uh, and so I've had many opportunities to talk with him, and I've always been very impressed by him. And, and part of what's impressive to me about him is that he's one of these people that really has that drive, that, that impetus, that, that, that zeal to, to move things forward and to, to uh, improve things. He's not about just, okay, I'm the president, now I dust off the playbook of how, he's out, how we've always done this and do it for the same, the same way for the, the nth time in a row. He's always interested in looking at how it can be better. And, and not just, again, him being an impetus, but turning and asking the Lord God and the Holy Spirit to guide us and to be that driving impetus for how we are to do this outreach, this important uh, work in our archdiocese. In addition to just learning that he has taken the role as president, uh, learning how the foundation, he and the other members of the board, uh, are trying to focus on making sure that we are maximizing the impact of the Catholic Services Appeal, looking at the ministries that are supported and trying to make sure that they are uh, what can best serve the needs uh, around us uh, and where it is really needed. You know, there are some things that we have been supporting with the Catholic Services Appeal that, uh, at least in their early stages, really needed a lot of support. Uh, but now, as time has gone on, have become much more established organizations. They have their own advancement teams. They raise a lot of money successfully themselves. Uh, and so taking a hard look at those supported ministries and saying, which ones maybe do we need to step back from supporting so that we can focus our efforts uh, more concertedly in other ways? It's obviously not easy to do to go to an organization and say, we're no longer going to support you financially. But I really think that, that, um, that, that focus on who really uh, is th those that are most in need and, and how can we maximize our, our generosity, the generosity of people such as yourselves uh, and parishes throughout the archdiocese. Um, and so I'm really impressed by their focus on that. And they really want to, uh, through a process of discernment, they really want to focus on, uh, on a few areas. They want to focus on pro-life outreaches because many of those uh, do great work on very little and have small uh, donor bases. Uh, and so we want to continue to support those pro-life efforts in our archdiocese. Uh, we also want to focus on Catholic education. Catholic education is very important uh, ministry of our parishes and the archdiocese as a whole. Uh, and costs to educate continue to rise because of inflation and the costs of goods and services. And uh, it certainly is not cheap to, uh, to send children to, to Catholic schools, as those who are here and even those who are not at our school know. 
Uh, and so it's, uh, it's uh, something that's important to our archdiocese and the Catholic Services Appeal Foundation that we continue to support Catholic education so that those who would, who would like to receive that Catholic education can do so. And then focusing on our archdiocesan outreach, our archdiocesan uh, vision and our out, uh, where we're headed some of that includes things that support the synod implementation and, and, the, and the priorities for our, that came out of our synod. Some of them include uh, supporting the seminaries uh, so that uh, the, those who are being called to the priesthood or to other vocations through the vocations office uh, have what they need in order to go forth and to be those laborers in the Lord's vineyard and to, uh, to bring the good news to many, many more people. It also includes our hospital chaplains. We have a great hospital chaplain corps here in the archdiocese, uh, but most priests, and maybe you know this, maybe this is new to you, but uh, most priests are paid their salary from their parish. Uh, and it's set by the archdiocese, so we don't get to set our own salary. Uh, we don't get to abuse things that way. Uh, but most of us get paid because we're assigned to a parish. But chaplains are not typically assigned to a parish, and they're also not typically supported by the hospital. The hospital generally does not pay uh, the chaplains. And so uh, making sure that we uh, give our chaplains what they need so they can serve those who are in our hospitals uh, and receiving uh, medical care as they do so well. And so all of this is very encouraging to me to see this life and energy and this focus and this uh, desire to maximize uh, our, our impact through the generosity of people such as yourself. So thank you once again for your past support of the Catholic Services Appeal. I'd ask that you'd prayerfully consider supporting it uh, this year. There are cards at the end of the pews. Uh, I apologize I didn't get uh, pencils or, or writing utensils with them. Uh, but even those cards, they've streamlined uh, this year. The cards used to be really complex, and they wanted you to like do the math as to how much you were giving, especially if you were giving uh, monthly, how much that was in the year. They've simplified almost all of that. Basically, you just have to check a box for whether it's a one-time gift or a recurring gift, uh, put in the amount, put your name and contact information, and that's all there is to it. Uh, those, those envelopes can be dropped in the collection this week or in a future week. Uh, they can be dropped off at the parish office. I think they're also just set up so that you could put a stamp on it and drop it in the mail as well. And so once again, I ask that you'd... Uh, I perfectly consider that, uh, and I'm grateful for your support of the Catholic Services Appeal. During Lent, we will use the Apostles' Creed, uh, which is a little different than the usual creed that we pray, and it is in your worship aid. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus Christ, though tempted, vanquished the devil. Let us offer our prayers, confidently asking for his strength. For the church and all her members, that in the face of temptation, we may rely on the power of God and his word. Let us pray to the Lord. 
for the nations of the world that they may resist the temptation to extend their power and instead seek service and the ways of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For immigrants, refugees, the unemployed, and the homeless, that their needs may be met and their human dignity upheld. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us, that we may know and receive the mercy of God offered to us in the sacrament of confession. Let us pray to the Lord. For the Catholic services appeal that through our gifts we will make Jesus known and loved, help those in need, and build up our local church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may be cleansed from all their sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear the prayers of your family, gracious Father, as we begin our Lenten season and enable us to be faithful to you. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Turn to God with all your heart, the 
source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender faithfulness of God. Return to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your, your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by, abs by abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that, celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus! Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni sunt celi et terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, Joseph, his assistant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. A new stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. A new stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. A new stay, qui
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. He will overshadow you with his pinions, and you will find refuge under his wings. His faithfulness will encompass you with a shield.
Let us pray. Renew now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and to strive by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. First off, just want to mention that uh, I don't think the bulletins even got delivered this week. I, I imagine that has something to do with uh, the weather we had this past week, but I apologize for that. Uh, I didn't see them anywhere, even sitting outside the door where they sometimes drop them when nobody's in the office. So uh, I, I just don't think we have any this weekend. But even more important to run through a few uh, events and upcoming things. Uh, Fridays are the big events, of course, in Lent. On this Friday, we have Eucharistic Adoration. Uh, our first Friday adoration from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. here in church. There's also adoration on Tuesday from 2 to 6 p.m. Uh, we're doing that for Lent. For both of those, you can sign up on our website. Uh, if you're able to commit to an hour, uh, you're also welcome to just drop by for a visit. Friday is also the first of our two Lenten fish fries put on by our men's club. They run from 5 to 7 p.m. in the school gym. If you haven't been before, you're missing out. This dinner is the talk of the town, so join us for them. Uh, and uh, the first one, like I said, is this Friday. The second one will be the last Friday in March. Afterwards, there are Stations of the Cross at 7 p.m. on Friday. This will be the case every week of Lent. Uh, and this week and most weeks, we'll have adoration and confessions following the stations at 7.30 p.m. So come for some or all of these opportunities on our Lenten Fridays. Wanted to announce again that our Lenten Reconciliation Service is a week from Wednesday. That's Wednesday, March 8th at 6.30 p.m. And so we'll have uh, several priests here to assist in hearing confessions, and we'll begin with just a simple prayer service that evening. So we invite you to join us for that. Uh, there are still Lenten materials at the entrances of the church, uh, and even though they are daily reflections and they started this past Wednesday, you can still take them and pick up with the current day. It's not too late. Uh, feel free to take them not only for yourselves as well, but for others who you know that might benefit from them also. So help yourself to those. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. This season calls us to 